I'm Mike Anderson, lead contributing editor of Smart Manufacturing Magazine, and this is another SME Media Webinar. Our topic is Automate Your Production Monitoring with Machine Data. The webinar will help you learn how automated production monitoring solutions capture accurate real-time machine data and automate data flow to other business systems, helping manufacturers achieve greater visibility and efficiency. Our presenter is Bill Beither, CEO of Machine Metrics. Bill co-founded Machine Metrics in 2015 to bring visibility and predictability to the manufacturing floor. Before I turn things over to Bill, I'd like to outline how the webinar will proceed and a couple of housekeeping items. On the right side of your screen, you'll find a question and answer box. If at any time during the presentation, you'd like to ask a question, please type it in this box and send it along. These questions will be answered at the end of the presentation. Should we run out of time, the questions will be sent to Bill and you'll receive an answer by email. Should you experience any difficulty during the webinar, such as a blank screen or lack of sound, please use the Q&A box to alert us and we will respond individually in writing the suggested fix. And that brings us to the final housekeeping item. Should you experience any technical difficulty that affects your viewing, the presentation will be made available in recorded form by about 4 p.m. Eastern today. You may then watch the recorded version of the webinar at a time and place when you have more bandwidth. You may also watch the webinar as many times as you wish to catch details you might have missed. Or for any other reason, all you need to do is sign in again using the credentials you used to join us now. I'll be rejoining you for our Q&A session later, but now I'm going to turn the microphone over to our presenter, Bill Byther. Bill? Thanks, Michael. I'm happy to be here. So, uh, you know, I, um, I founded Machine Metrics uh, back in 2015 really to solve a pretty significant problem in manufacturing, which is uh, a lack of real-time uh, visibility in, in terms of your, your manufacturing operations. And uh, there's been a lot of investment in automation, like robotics, machinery. When it comes to actually leveraging that data to drive efficiency, um, there's uh, really a lack, lack of connectivity on the factory floor. So um, first I'd like to really um, so just to present with um, this data that we've, um, uh, we've been tracking over the last few years, which is that uh, the average machine utilization rate across manufacturing is just 28%. Uh, this is based on, uh, on thousands of machines that we're actively connected to. And it's part of our um, annual um, state of the industry report. So you know, what we see today is that you know, manufacturers are under an incredible amount of pressure. So there's a fluctuating demand uh, that's driving need to produce at higher capacities, uh, much more than 28%. Uh, there's a skilled worker shortage that, um, you know, that makes it really difficult to, you know, to keep uh, workers motivated, to hire them, and, to, and, and we really need to ensure that uh, there's a high level of employee satisf satisfaction. There's also heightened competition. Um, there really is a need to deliver high, higher quality products um, on, uh, with, with lower margins. So what, um, but what we also see in, in manufacturing today is that there's, um, there's a disconnection between the, um, the machines that are producing your parts, the people who are operating the machines, and the systems that are running all of your back office. And um, you know, this is really, I mean, there's the very, uh, so the lean systems are very manual. Um, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of writing, a lot of manual entry, and uh, this relies uh, quite a bit on human interaction. You know, and just to sort of outline, uh, we, we do really have a, a workforce problem um, in the industry. You know, it's really essential that you keep your, your frontline workers, your operators, focused on tending their machines, improving their processes, making key business decisions, and not an, in entering in uh, data into their systems manually. So what, um, what we've seen really to, to address these, uh, uh, this problem is, is, um, is really IoT. So you've heard about industrial IoT for, uh, for at least 10 years. And, um, and, and really the, the promise of industrial IoT is to connect your, your systems, exactly what I was describing, connecting your machines with your people and your systems and, uh, and, getting, and using actual data. But what we found is that the uh, IoT systems um, that have been implemented, there's a high failure rate and um, primarily because the, uh, these systems are, are pretty horizontal, requires a lot of development, outside consulting, 
Um, there's a lack of domain expertise built into the into the software, and um, really only the the largest of companies with um, with a lot of IT resources uh, can be successful in rolling out these initiatives. And um, you know we've seen that um, you know as much as 60% or even more of these initiatives fail at the proof of concept stage. And um, if you think about it, uh, if you look at manufacturing equipment, you have various different types of equipment, different ways to connect, different systems that you're running. It's a very difficult problem. And uh, you know, having a domain expertise into your, ty your type of manufacturing is really critical for these initiatives to be successful. So what, um, you, know, what, uh, what you see today in this disconnection is, uh, is like I said, is, is you have data that flows, that needs to flow into your ERP or MES system. And today you, you see your, your machine operators spending a fair amount of time uh, entering data in manually at the end of every shift, every hour, to ensure that these systems are up to date so that the data is there for your business users to make these key decisions. And um, you know, so they, um, you know, their work is tied up every day in this data entry. And um, you know, the, these MES systems are critical into you know, understanding your production, your quality, your maintenance, your inventory, um, but they really do rely on this data. So um, what, um, what you'd really like to see, and this is you know, where, we, where we come in, is real-time data that's captured from the equipment that's making these parts, your machines, that, um, that flows directly into your systems, and you have your people that augment that only as necessary. And uh, you know, that's what we've been working on um, with, with machine metrics, really to solve this problem, to connect your machines with your people and uh, any other systems. And, uh, and that's where you know, we kind of bring in machine metrics, which is a manufacturing's industrial data platform specifically built for machines. And uh, we've made it really easy to capture data from your manufacturing equipment, transform that into a common data structure that works across all of your different machines so that you can increase your visibility, uh, you, can, um, you can connect your other systems and initiate action workflows that automate uh, operations around the machine. And uh, we made that process really easy. And really, this presentation is to is to kind of outline how this, uh, you know, how we approach this problem, and how it uh, how it can help um, help manufacturers really automate that that flow of data. So, just a little bit about um, you know about us and, and our background. Like I said, we started in 2015. Uh, we have um, you know, we have customers globally. Uh, we have you know hundreds of customers. We connected to thousands of machines. You know, we really understand this problem. Um, we have a team of, um, of, uh, you know, of engineers, of, uh, of customer operations people that really ensure that our customers are successful. And, uh, and we've seen a lot of growth and traction uh, over, over the past few years. So when we, when we talk about machines, you know, I just, by the way, I just realized um, I was not advancing the slides. So I'm going to go and, and catch up a little bit. <laughs> so um, we'll do that right now. Um, here, I'll get to the what's really important here. Um, so let's uh, let's go right to the um, right to the uh, let's see, where am I right here? Okay. So when we talk about um, the machines that um, that we connect, uh, we really um, we started focusing on CNC machines, but since then we've we've expanded into all sorts of other you know, discrete manufacturing equipment. So whether it's a it's a, a lathe, a um, a laser. A, a, um, a, ro a robot, like a robotic welder, a, a punch press. Uh, these are machines that we're familiar with, and, and we, we've had to make that really easy to, to capture data from these machines and, make, and transform that so that you can actually run analytics on that. Uh, and we've, we've really made sure that that process is easy. And then the way that, the way that really works is uh, we, have, um, uh, we have this uh, system that, that essentially um, an edge device that connects to your machine's control, so your PLC or, or your control. So it, it streams data right through this Ethernet connection. And, uh, and it, uh, if you have like a legacy machine where you don't have data right from the PLC or control, uh, we can use additional sensors like a current transducer to get basic information from that machine. So the, um, what, what, what we do is that we, we take this data, and by the way, we support um, standard industrial protocols, such as OPC UA, MT Connect, Ethernet IP. Uh, but we've built uh, specialized connectors into, into specific machines, such as uh, Lincoln Electric Welders. And we have, um, we have uh, connectors into 
high nine CNC controls. Uh, but we also uh, have a partnership with a company called IFM uh, where we can support any IO link sensor. So if you want to add additional sensors in addition to your machine data, you can do that really easily. Um, and again, this data is transformed into that, into that uh, standard uh, or that common model and, uh, and is transmitted to the, um, into the machine metrics uh, cloud where, uh, where then you can run your applications and analytics. So the, um, once that data is, uh, is available, um, you, you essentially have a cloud historian where you can query that information. Um, you can, uh, you're, you're able to access that through APIs. If you do want to build your own uh, applications on top of this uh, platform, you can. But what's unique about this is that we, we overlay operational data, so human context, that data, and information from the machine that ties into your machine condition data, so you have that full story. Uh, and then workflows are available that uh, can be triggered uh, based on these uh, these conditions, and we'll get more into that in into the uh, into the demo. And finally, you know, we we can integrate into other best of breed systems. So um, whether it's a an MES system, a BI system, a maintenance uh, maintenance software, uh, we um, we can connect these systems so that the data is live, real time, and accurate. And then um, so. The, really, the, the use cases that we set for the main solutions for our customers, um, the first really is capacity utilization, understanding your capacity, how your machines have been performing, but then also condition monitoring. So your maintenance team you know, might want to you know, understand you know, the certain conditions of their machine and respond quickly when there's an issue. You know, for example, if your coolant temperature is, is too high, uh, we can ensure that your team is able to respond to that and ensure that, that um, uh, that your parts will be of, uh, of highest quality based on based on these conditions. Uh, we give you the ability to view that data in real time, so you can identify you know, issues and patterns, and then and create these notifications to to initiate that uh, that action. And we've done some work into into CNC toolware monitoring, so we can understand the wear of tools over time, um, and can also uh, deliver onto our edge platform custom analytics that uh, that. A, that one of our customers you know, that has like a team of scientists might uh, might be able to build and deploy. But what we're going to focus on, and the last slide really in this uh, in this presentation is production monitoring. Yeah, this is um, it, what's really this is really important to understanding your uh, your throughput. If you're going to deliver on time, um, it uh, it helps identify bottlenecks for specific uh, types of operations. Um, it's really required for quoting. And, um, and this is the information that really is, uh, is needed in your MES and ERP systems. So the way that machine metrics works is that we pull this production data, this operational data directly from the machine. So you don't have to enter in data automatically or, or interface with, with, uh, uh, with the system you know, on, a, on a regular basis. And then that data is, um, is then structured in a way that makes it really easy to synchronize with your MES. And having this history means that you can understand your, um, how much downtime has occurred for a particular job, you know, how much time it takes to change over, um, your utilization, your OEE. And, uh, and, and finally, you, know, you can automate certain tasks, you know, production-related tasks with, uh, with the use of workflows. So with that, um, I would, uh, let me, let me move to the um into the demonstration part of this and i'm going to go share my screen and let's see. so we're going to bring up machine metrics right here so you should be able to see if you don't see the um see the actual screen there's a, a browser interface you might need to click a there's a box with an arrow that'll bring this into into view uh, but essentially, um, th what you're seeing here is machine metrics, and uh, this is the um, you know this is the the homepage. When you go there, you have your machines already connected. Um, you're streaming data in real time. Um, it's our configurable machines list that allows you to present that data in a way that you um, you, you might want to see that data. So, for example, you know here we have uh, a few machines that are all connected. They're all active. You can see how long they've been active. Um, we have the current operation that's running on that machine. Um, this is the utilization rate over the past, uh, as right now we're looking at the last 24 hours, you know, what that looks like over time, and other various metrics. Uh, now, you know, this is very configurable, so I can look at this, you know, let's look at, say, the last 30 days, and, um, 
and uh, you, you can look at the data, slice it and dice it how, how you'd like. But what I'd like to focus on here, um, there's a lot of aspects of machine metrics. You can leverage the data for you know, many use cases, but is in that production monitoring use case. So I, I want to draw your attention to this three-axis mill. So I'm going to bring up the um, essentially the diagnostic page. This, these are all the data items that once you connect to a machine, and this is based on a, a, has a FANUC-based controller, we automatically map these data items to that common structure so that um, you're able to see what, um, you know, what we're pulling in real time. And th there's really three key data points for production monitoring. Um, one is the, uh, the current status, we call it execution. You can see this is active. Um, the other is the um, is number of parts produced, your part cycles. You can see there's a part counter here. And the third, which is really critical for um, automating your production monitoring, is the operation name. So here we can pull that right from the program name. But sometimes you see that in the, the program header, and specifically in a CNC machine, you'll, you'll often send programs to the machine and it's embedded in a comment. Uh, we have tools to be able to extract that so that you can have a, a real, um, that the text that represents that operation is, um, is known. And uh, that's set up once when you configure the machine. So, um, so that's, the, um, that's really a machine that has all the operational data. Let me draw your attention to this other machine. This is a legacy lathe. So you know, we also support legacy machines. Uh, these machines uh, might not have all that information. And here you can see we only have, um, we have a current transducer that's, that's essentially defining whether the machine's running or not. That defines the execution state, whether it's active or inactive. We have a part counter, which, um, which can be yeah, essentially based on that current transducer, or it could pick it up from a part catcher. Um, and uh, we don't have an actual program because it's, uh, this is just a sensor-based install. So this is going to require a little bit more effort in terms of the operator to be able to uh, stream data into your MES. So, so now let's, uh, let's move to you know, where, what does the operator need to do uh, once you're connected to these machines? Because when you're, as soon as you connect the machines and you're getting operational data, you have this information available for, for quoting and uh, that this, whole, this whole history. But there is, a, there is some information that is, um, is required to, to really have that full understanding. And, and this, by the way, is our operator interface. Um, it's configurable. Um, you can have you know, different tabs. Uh, you, um, you also, you know, if, you, if you choose to, you can categorize downtime. Um, you can uh, move this into, into setups. You can track your changeovers, reject parts, and so forth. Um, but all this is optional. Um, the, the real point is, and what we've seen is that you want to bring in operators to augment machine data when necessary. So in this case, we're automatically getting the, um, the operational data from the machine. Um, but what we don't have is the work order. And that work order is required to be able to sync to your MES. So we provide an interface to make that really easy. But before I do that, I want to bring up the actual machine that this is connected to. Uh, so what you'll see here, um, for those that run CNC machines, this will look familiar. It's a, it's a FANUC control. And uh, what, what I'm going to do here is actually um, stop, stop this machine. And uh, we're going to go into, uh, and we're actually going to change this, uh, this program. And uh, what you'll see, so I'm going to go ahead and, and move this program to the main. And just, just to remind you, we are running, uh, we are running program uh, wheel disk. Okay, and you can see that this just went down. Um, I could categorize that downtime, but uh, I'm going to change this program to the. You know, so now we just change that to the main program, and we're going to start that cycle. And what you'll see, you know, this machine is down to the changeover. Um, this will automatically change to this uh, to this new program, and uh, and this will only take a. And it just did right here. Um, now I'm running. Us uh, so now we're actually running this other this other program. But what I can do is we can go in and, and, uh, and actually create a new work order. So let's give that a work order, um, yeah, let's do 3,000. Okay, and that information, we're gonna put that right into production, that information then is available to sync to your ERP. So all the operator needs to do, you could be changing over your, your jobs all day long, um, they'll need, to, be able, they'll need to, to set the work order so that uh, you know, we, can, uh, we can associate that with, uh, with the ERP. So that's an example of a machine where we have um, uh, all that data right from the machine data. Now, if we go into a, uh, this is our um, legacy lathe. So this is that machine that has just a simple sensor um, integration. And I just want to point out, 
this machine is now, we can categorize that downtime. Um, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna make that so that this is a tool change, let's just say. Um, it, is a, it is a feature that we support, so you have that data in a Pareto. Um, but uh, what I want to focus on is that this, in this case, there's, there's more work required on the operator since we're not getting the operational data from the machine. They will need to start a new run, okay? And uh, and we're gonna we're gonna do a um, we're gonna basically start a whole new job here because it's not found already. We can go and create this new operation. Yeah. So all that is is just a, a couple clicks here. We can give that that work order, and uh, and now we're um, we can track our setup, and once we're done setting up, enter in production. Now, you see there's some clicks here. Um, these are not required if you have that, that operational data from the machine. So now what you'll see is that we're, we're actually tracking this information over time. So we, um, we were running the, um, before we were running a different job, but now we can go in and check out this information, how, it's, how, it's, um, uh, how we report on that. So by viewing the operational report, what this what this gives us is the um, is the full history of this operation. Now you can essentially go to Machine Metrics if you're quoting a new job and search for this operation, pull it up, and you have a full history. Uh, you can understand you know how long does it really take to make these parts? How much downtime do you typically see? What are my real cycle times? Um, you know often these cycle times are generated from your CAM program. Uh, and uh, or there is something that's been a standard for years, perhaps, and it's never been updated. So here you can actually go in and see what those cycle, real cycle times are. So in this case, I've run this wheel bearing on three different machines, and uh, I'm going to drill into this three-axis mill. Okay, we'll go into this three-axis mill, and what I what I can find is that I can see every time that I ran this. You know, I can ran I ran this between looks like between May and and June, but you know, in a real scenario, you might have run this two years ago. Right, and uh, I can I can tell if I'm running my um, my my part at the same rate as I expected. I'm supposed to be running this at three minutes and forty seconds. I'm actually running it more like four minutes. Like see how that trends over time, and uh, and I also have a view into where my downtime is coming from. Should you enable this feature for operators to classify that downtime, provide that human context, uh, similarly to part rejections. But what I really want to do is like let's drill into this even deeper. So here I have this one production run. I want to go right into the timeline, and uh, this timeline is um, is going to tell us. Uh, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to jump over to a um, a newer version of this that we're in the process of of releasing. So this uh, this timeline really gives you the the full view into what's happening during that whole production run. And again, we're tracking this data from the machine, so I can see exactly when I was running, when I was disconnected. Um, the downtime events should they be categorized or not? Um, I can tell like what what production, what operation it was running, what operator was on that that machine, any alarms, all, all my part cycles. And what this allows me to do is I you know really dive in and find out like what what was running that machine. I mean we we can even go deeper and pull up you know for a single cycle what uh, what tools were in place, how long was a particular tool running, and and really to help to optimize those cycles. And this information is tied to that operation that uh, that we were tracking. So you know this really helps you identify you know what um, what the reality is for for making this particular component. So going back to the um, um, to the uh, oh, okay, and finally, what I wanted to point out is um, is you can export this data. I'm going to go back to the to that that report um, into a, in, into a CSV. Um, essentially allowing you to then take that import into your into your MES system. Uh, you can see it exporting here. Um, this is um, this is the piece that can you know, take out that manual data entry. So you do do not need to type in this information. We already have a number of parts produced, number of rejections, uh, the cycle time, the amount of downtime. So as opposed to having to type this in every shift, just import a CSV. Or you know for certain systems we provide that connection and automated um, you know, plug and play integration. So what I what I want to move to is that is that this is the um, you know, this is really the flow for monitoring production, but there's a lot of benefits that you get from having this data that goes just beyond production monitoring. And and what what I'd like to point out is um, there are certain scenarios that could occur on this machine that um, that you might want to notify um, the the operator to, to help them um, overcome a problem. So what what I want to to show is uh, let's look at our alarms. 
And uh, this will pull in all the alarms from all the machines. Now this could be an alarm that is, um, is generated directly from the machine, or it could be a custom condition that's created you know, based on a complex logic. Uh, in this case, notice this feed rate override below 100. Um, we've seen this uh, occur a few times. Let's go create a workflow. Uh, and what this workflow will do is uh, whenever this alarm is triggered, uh, and by the way, there's numerous triggers for our workflows, but we'll focus on the alarms. Uh, we can create an action. And the action that, that I'm gonna wanna, wanna create is, uh, let's say, um, so feed override is under, is under 100, please reset. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the operator know that they shouldn't be running under 100. Now, maybe I would wanna actually give that a few minutes, but for demo purposes, we'll call that, we'll make that immediate. And then let's send a notification. Um, I'll send a notification, I'll give it a minute delay. And if that is still active in a minute, notify the supervisor that, um, that they, they need to walk over to the machine and find out why this is running slower than it should. So I'm going to create that workflow, and um, and I also want to note that we have another workflow here, which is a manual workflow. Call an engineer. Okay, this is um, this is where this is triggered manually from the operator interface. Provides a communication tool for uh, for the operators to call for help. So going back here, um, what um, what I want to do is is actually change that override state. So back to the machine control. You know, if I'm moving this override down to let's say 50. That means that machine's running slower. Um, um, we'll want to be able to send the information to the operator to communicate that, yeah, they need to reset this. So you can see that notice here. You can include any text. And uh, in a minute, I'll also be receiving a text message on my phone. So you can imagine there's, um, there's quite a few scenarios um, that, um, that you could build um, through these workflows that can help automate these actions and, and improve your response time and, and prevent downtime. Um, so, so that's um, you know that here's an example of our workflows, uh, and uh, get back to the um, oh yeah, and, and the other that that I wanted to demonstrate is um, is this uh, call an engineer. So if you have a problem, let's say that well, I'm not sure why um, you know I need to turn this um, override down, otherwise the machine is you know there's a problem with the machine. Let's call the engineer to bring them over, um, and I don't have to worry about. You know, trying to walk over, find where the engineer is, um, they'll get a notification right on their phone. So, great. Well, um, so that's a, you know, just a, a really a quick overview of, um, of how you'd use machine metrics to monitor production. Again, most manufacturers, I would say all, are monitoring production in some way. And I found that nearly all of them are, are typing in data manually um, at least once a day. Uh, using the, the data that already exists in your machines, you can automate that complete process. And it's, um, it's kind of stunning that this hasn't been done already, um, but we see that time and time again, nearly all of our customers, they, they come to us and, and uh, you know, we're helping them sort of streamline that, that flow of data. So um, with that, I'm going to, uh, we'll open it up to some questions. Um, I haven't even read them yet. So um, I'll, I'll stop my share and um, we'll, see if, um, we'll see if we can uh, get to these questions. That's great. Okay, thank you, Bill. Uh, yeah, some good questions have come in. And, uh, uh, <laughs> but before we do that, let me just say, I, I love that you are, are ready for anything with this program, this program, is at you know you have this that handles that and you have this that handles that but if worse comes to worse call an engineer and you've got that that handled too <laughs> yeah and, and really the the call an engineer is whatever you want it to be right you create that right. it's uh, it could be you know anything but yeah that's yeah, we, so, we really uh, try to make so, sure uh, just just to add on to that we really want to make sure that you know we're not changing your process we want to streamline what's what's very manual and tedious. Take that out, but we're not asking you to change, you know, the systems that actually work. Right, right. Very good, very good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I had I had questions of my own. Uh, one, uh, one of which is, uh, uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, the program in, in terms of uh, ease of use? For for uh, the people on the floor, uh, I'm, I'm thinking of the the workforce issue of trying to find trained workers, so th they are yeah. perhaps less trained than they used to be. 
Uh, could you talk about that uh, a little bit? Yeah, I mean, uh, what we find is that sort of the, the newer generation of frontline workers are really excited to adopt new technology and uh, and leverage mm -hmm. data. They're used to that in their in their day to day. So by providing a system like machine metrics to them, you know, it, it makes their job more enjoyable. Um, as long as you're not asking them to, you know, pull them away from what you know what they're really um, you know, what they're hired to do, which is ten machines, making sure that they're they're running. So that's that's a caveat. You know, give them information to help them do their job, but don't take them away from you know what they're supposed to do day to day. Great. Okay, so let's let's dive into the real questions. Uh, so uh, the first one is, uh, can you talk a little bit about what's involved in connecting my machines? Yeah, so really, it's the process is, is pretty simple. The the one you know one requirement is that your machines are networked. You know, not all manufacturers have their machines networked. Uh, we do support Wi-Fi, but um, that could be a challenge in its own. You have to have like really strong Wi-Fi. Our edge device can be connected to all of your machines over a network. And um, what um, what that allows you to do is very quickly go through the, the interface, add a machine if you know your IP address, and you can add them, you know, for these modern machines, they can be added, you know, every, you know, every minute or so, like it's pretty quick. Um, there are certain machines though, that uh, you might need to upgrade the controls or the software to ensure it has a connectivity method. Uh, that could take more time. So what we do is that we um, we have experts on our team that will review your list of machines and and guide you in terms of hey these machines can be connected very easily. These might re require you know, more work, maybe some hardware. And then you have you talk to your OEM to to get a newer version of software to to connect to those those machines. Okay, great, great. Uh, uh, and can you talk a little bit more about how data can flow into an ERP system? I know you, you talked about that a little bit, but yeah. So you know, basically, that you know, our our goal is to structure that data so it's in that format of a labor ticket that um, that's needed for your ERP system. So you know, we have the the operator, the, um, you know, the work order, the operation, the machine, number of parts, rejections. And uh, and you know and downtime, which a lot of MES systems will use, so that the um, the at the most basic level, you import that as a CSV into your ERP system, so you're not having to retype in data, or we can set up an automation to do that, or in some cases we do like a full API integration, and uh, that does depend on the um, the type of, of uh, ERP system that you that you have. Okay, great, great. Now here's an interesting question. Um, does this work on instruments in the food industry, such as labeling and uh, packaging machines? It, it actually does. But uh, what I tell our customers and prospects is that we are designed for discrete manufacturing. And uh, so like, like conveyor lines, processes, like, can, like you know, you're mixing ingredients, that really isn't what machine metrics is designed for. Um, there's, um, you know, there's other analytic solutions that are that work well for for that, those industries that tie into data that's already exists in historian. You know, we're really focused on discrete industries such as um, such as like medical device, um, heavy industry, automotive, aerospace. Um, where we do like electronics, things like that. But um, you know, we we don't have uh, customers currently in the food industry. Okay. Okay. Good. Good to know. Uh, okay, here's a, here's a, this one's a little longer. Uh, so, so uh, if you need me to repeat it, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to do so. So here it goes. Uh, a person writes, my company has dashboards for machines showing utilization based on execution state and some other data items. But the question becomes, why is this machine spending so much time in quote ready unquote or quote stopped state? Is your, is your product solution for that to manually enter why the machine is inactive? Yeah, so and, uh, there's, I, yeah. we actually have that functionality. We've had that for a while. So if the machine is inactive, I didn't demonstrate it. Uh, actually, you did you did see, I think at, at one point there was an inactive. I did, I did show you um, the process of, of annotating that downtime. It's a manual process because if it's just idle and you're not getting any other, any other information from the machine, you might not know why. So. What we tell our customers is that um, you know, if you don't understand where those bottlenecks are coming from, 
enable downtime categorization for a period of time. And uh, maybe it's a, a couple of weeks, maybe it's a month, maybe it's three months and get a sense for where your downtime is coming from. But don't ask your operators to continuously categorize downtime because that, it gets tiring for them. You know, every time there's downtime to, to categorize. So, um, so you might want to you make sure you, you address that carefully so you're not asking operators to do more than they need uh, with the system. But yeah, we do, right. absolutely do support it. We have really good functionality around that. Um, you can have, you know, you can have a hierarchy of downtime reasons and then report on that through um, through uh, downtime Pareto. Okay, great, great. Uh, another question: um, Once the work order is changed for a new job, if you go back to the previous work order uh, slash job, does the production count pick back up from where you had yeah. left off? Yeah, so what you do is if you, uh, the work order is a very simple concept in machine metrics, you're just tagging a production run. So if, you, if you're creating okay. a new work order, you're creating a new production run. So you could have two different production runs with the same work order that when you, they, when you basically update your MES, you have two different labor tickets. So it will, it will come together um, in, your, in your MES system. Great, great, okay. Um, for legacy systems, can you use basic AWS sensors? I think you're talking about the Monotron sensors that that um, you know they they've been marketing. Um, you know the the answer is no, uh, not not right now. We we do have a pretty um, simple installation for um, for legacy systems. You know, just a current transducer. Uh, you know, we we could look into that. You know, I guess I'd like to learn more. That's something that you know your company is using. Um, I, I it could be possible for us to use those sensors for hey, you know, machine is operating. There's there's a vibration level. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, but the one thing about those sensors is that they only update every ten minutes or so. So you're not gonna that data is not gonna be as real time. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Um, where are where are the notifications being populated on the control panel? So really, de so it really depends on. I mean, the workflows are very flexible. You decide how to notify, right? And I didn't uh, touch on this, but it, it isn't just about you know pushing data to the operator or text messages. It could be what we call a webhook, which could actually tie to other systems. So if you already have a let's say a maintenance system tie into that so the event is pushed to your maintenance system and that's a system that creates the um, the like the work order for repairing your machine. So, you know, it's a very flexible system for notifications. Cool, okay, great. Uh, okay, another one. Uh, we're cruising right along though, we're doing great. Uh, we got 15 minutes and plenty of time for your questions, folks. So keep typing them in if you like. Um, so the next one is, you did say this exports in a CSV period. So this system has no problem communicating with Excel? Yeah. Not only can we export to CSV, but you can set up an automation. And we have, um, if you go to our knowledge base, we have instructions on how to do that, where through our APIs, you can pull data in and have that update automatically into Excel. So if you prefer using Excel for your reporting, go for it. Um, I didn't touch on this, but we also have a full BI tool called the Report Builder built into Machine Metrics. So you hmm. decide. Yeah, what, what works best for you. Hmm. Okay, great, great. Beats typing though, that's for sure. Uh, okay, uh, another one. So when looking at investment, how quickly do you typically see the payback with using machine metrics? So a lot of times our customers don't believe us, but the the amount of, you know, at one example, so we have a, a med, device, med device customer and one of their plants, they rolled out machine metrics and they literally they saw um, they saw an improvement in their in their in their machine utilization productivity. I think it went from around thirty percent to over sixty percent, and uh, in a matter of a few months. And the amount the ROI on that is just um, like it's it's kind of like it's too big to even calculate. It's like within a day. Now, you know, there's other cases where you're already fairly optimized and you're, you have these use cases like, hey, let's, um, you know, let's ensure that, uh, you know, whenever the coolant temperature is too high, we're going to stop creating scrap parts. You know, that, that ROI maybe is on just a, a couple of machines. You know, that ROI might be a little bit longer. 
Um, but generally, what we see is that there's an improvement of 10, 15, 20% out of the gate. And if you look at the, you know, the expense of, of the subscription of machine metrics, uh, the payback is within weeks or you know, sometimes uh, just a, a couple months. And uh, typically what mm -hmm. we see. Yeah, 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 that sounds about right. Uh, okay. Um, does this system need a dedicated computer for DNS? And what monitor or TV do you feel works best with this system? So the, the only dedicated computer that's required, and um, I, I had that early in my presentation that I skipped across because I didn't advance my slides, <laughs> is uh, in fact, uh, I think I have one right here, is uh, an edge device that you can, um, you can purchase from us. Let's see, this right here. This is, um, this is a, uh, just a few hundred dollars. And it, it, all it is, is a Linux-based PC. This connects to your network. All our edge software runs on this. You have one port that's, uh, that's on your machine network. The other one is your internet or the Wi-Fi to the internet. That's all that, that you need. Now, we also support what we call virtual edge that you can install on your own hardware. And uh, so it really depends, like what works best for you. Um, in terms of um, the, you know, what, how to display this, any TV um, that you have, either it has like a browser, the newer TVs have browsers built in, or you can use a um, Chrome bit. These are these nice little inexpensive devices that will, that will uh, display a Chrome browser. Um, that's a really nice way to display that dashboard on your shop floor. Great, great, okay. Uh, here's, here's another one. Uh, is the production run defined by the program number and execution state? So the, yeah, the, what, what you do is you define when you're setting up the machine, what is that data item that represents the operation? And when that, when that operation changes, you have a new production run. So if a new program is loaded on the machine, it's a new production run. Now you can manually indicate that that's in setup if you need to, it might not be that you're in production right away. Um, that's, that would be done through the operator interface. But uh, whenever there's a new production run that, that or new operation, that creates a new production run. Great, great. And it looks like the last question that uh, I see up here now is, is there an option in Spanish? Is that something you've there done is. yet? Yeah, so, so machine hey. metrics is localized into many languages. Spanish is, uh, is our number one outside of English. So, you know, we do have Spanish speakers on our team. We have customers, um, especially in uh, Central and South America, um, that are everyday users of machine metrics. Great, great, fantastic. Well, that seems to be all the questions that have come in. Uh, so uh, I guess we'll leave it at that for now. Um, people, if you have more questions, I'm sure you'd be happy, I'm sure Bill would be happy to answer uh, any of your questions by email. Uh, there was one that I think you missed, which is do you connect to 3D okay. printers? Uh, we do. Oh, actually. I missed, I did miss that. Um, yeah, <laughs> it yeah. was an early question. Um, yeah, so uh, that is, uh, we have connected to 3D printers, um, not as common. Um, you know, we, we see a lot of higher production machines that are that are connected to machine metrics, but uh, but we have connected to you know a number of three D printers as well. Great, great, yeah, yeah, very important these days. Yeah, okay, but uh, all right. Well, so I'm going to say at this point, uh, thank you once again, Bill Bither of Machine Metrics. Thank you everybody for joining in as well. Uh, as I said, any questions that come in after this point will be passed along to Bill and Machine Metrics, and you can expect a reply by email. And the entire webinar will be available for replay by 4 p.m. Eastern, and you can access it by using the same sign-in link you used already. So thank you all of you for joining us on this SME Media webinar. We hope you found it informative and that you'll join us for future webinars. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.